Our theme song, God Will Make A Way. If I could please invite you to stand as we sing this song. Let's go from the top again. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to his side with love and strength for each new singing. I'm going to hand over to Errol now. Please be seated. Good. Good evening, everybody. Wow, that was two bodies. Let's try and see if we can make it three bodies. Good evening, everybody. That was more than three. Amen. Welcome to the first evening session. We've already started Divine Service with a hope for today and tomorrow's series. Just have one question. Anybody here visiting us for the first time? Visiting us here for the first time? We have a few gifts. We've got a hand over here. Please, the ushers. Raise it high, please. Good to see you. Can you tell us your name, please? Peter. Welcome, Peter. My name is Errol. I'm the hosting for today. You're going to get a little gift to read in your own time and a little greeting, personal greeting. Thank you for coming. I take it you've come with David. Amen. Anybody else come for the first time? Okay, we've got one or two at the back. Welcome. What's your names, those who've taken our gifts? We need to know your names. I know I saw you this morning, but I did actually, don't remember you remember your name. You might have told me. Sean. Sure. You know what, Sean? We have a Sean who sometimes comes here. It's people who said, this guy looks like Sean. And it's kind of ironic that your name is Sean too. <laughs> it's good to see you. He joined us for street witnesses as well, so it's good to see you. In fact, it's good to see everybody. It's good to Now, I've got one other gift, okay? So this gift is for anyone who's visiting who doesn't own a Bible. If you're visiting and you don't own a Bible... If you do, then you don't need another one, I guess. But if you don't own a Bible, this is for you. You could... <laughs> Did you hear what she said? What if you're visiting and you want that Bible? It's, it's the same as any other Bible. It's just King James Version. It's no point. It's not, it's not, but, if you, but if you come tomorrow, if you come tomorrow, and this is not, this is not for your next door neighbor, it's for anybody who comes tomorrow who doesn't own a Bible, Here's a free Bible. We really want everybody. I don't know what you're pointing for. That I can't read sign language. Sean, you don't have a Bible, Sean? Your Bible's tore up. All right, Sean, since you're so brave, so your Bible tore up. Obviously overused. <laughs> Obviously overused. Welcome. That one's not, that's not torn up. That's not torn up. So let your friend Sean and others know that if you come to the Hopeful Today or Tomorrow Gospel series and you don't own a Bible or it's torn up, you have what we have one to give you. Just a couple of quick promotions. 
Okay, just a, a couple of quick promotions. Now, we've got loads of these leaflets, hopefully today and tomorrow's series, um, in and around the, the, the shelves, the shelves, the, the front desk, so you can take one and give it to a friend or family member. We're also having a health clinic. We used to call it health fair back in the day, but we're having a health clinic on Sunday the 22nd. We've got some handbills and we've also got some on the front desk you want to give to your friends and neighbours. Um, health checks, health advice and health talks next Sunday at 5pm. So please make a special effort to be there and to invite a friend. The plan is to have a baptism on Sabbath coming, next week's Sabbath or Saturday, if you like. Um, now, the, the, the plan really was to have a baptism at the end of it. Yes, um, and we still plan to do that on the 28th, but there was somebody who came specially and said that she would like to be baptised, but she's going on holiday like on the 25th or the 26th, something like that, so can we organise a baptism? And we were like, yeah. So the, the, the plan is to have a baptism next Sabbath afternoon on the 21st and also the 28th. So those who are considering baptisms, please speak to myself um, one of the elders, or to Joy um, Alexander, so we can know and register it. So I'm going to invite the preacher to... In fact, where's the praise team? Have they gone? Can we call them back, please? Somebody. We'd like to sing a song. Oh, there they are. I'll give you the choice. You can sing the theme song again, or you can sing a song of your choice as we invite the preacher, who, by the way, his name is Clarence Jackson, um, we, we introduced him already this morning, but those who were not here, he's someone who's very much in passionate about youth, youth ministries and mentoring. That's key to what he does. Um, he's someone also very passionate about preaching, as you will see when he about comes up and shares the message. Um, he also has a book out, I forgot what it's called now, From, from Yard to Broad or Broad to Yard, one of them, one of them is a good book anyway available at all good bookstores um, or you can see him <laughs> you can see him um, and he will share that with you but what song are we going to sing we're going to sing the theme song again so that you will know it by the end of the campaign if not before so you can stay seated for this and maybe you can sing it prayerfully and then the next voice you'll hear after that will be Clarence Jackson the evangelist not only for today but for the next two weeks God bless Good evening, everyone. All right. Sound like you're at number 10 Downing Street. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Now, I'm not the type who 
it's energetic in the morning and the evening it turned down it's still the same you know what i mean so i'm gonna ask you please to stand for me in jesus name amen because this will feel like it's the first time i'm preaching amen amen inhale exhale obviously there's more people on this side but i don't doubt you guys at all all right repeat after me today has been a great day my life my life my life is going to be a great life whatsoever your hands find to do do it amen amen you may be seated you may be seated all right all right there's something in that food it, it, give me energy amen amen all right god will make a way where there seems to be no way i like that i don't want us to only sing that song anymore i want us to believe the words and know that God will make a way where there seems to be no way in order for us to have hope for today and for tomorrow we need to know that God will make a way amen now this morning we learned that he made a way for a father Let me say it again. This morning, we were reminded that he made a way for a father. Amen. What I'm going to do, I'm going to ask all the fathers here to please stand. All the fathers here. And I'm going to ask any fathers, mentors. And I'm going to ask someone from the prayer team, Balaam prayer team. I want you to please come and pray for the fathers. Now, let me tell you something. Fathers get licks every day. Every day, you know. Where are the fathers? The fathers ain't doing this. The fathers ain't doing that. I'm just going to ask that the prayer will be, thank God for the fathers we have. Yes, forgive us of where we are falling short, but may God help us to be the best fathers we can be. Amen? I'm asking a wife to... Forget about him being a husband for a moment and just remember that he's a father. Pray. At least 90% of the young boys I've worked with over the years, I know one of the most common factors, no father figure in their life. Some of them, I will say to them, when was the last time any man sat with you and spoke with you for an hour? They shook their head. Some of them you see on the streets, they've never had the experience of a man sitting with them and reasoning for an hour. And it's all about them. Some of them, when I speak to them, I say, look, when they disrespect me, I say, which man ever sat with you for an hour and just reason about you? I say, continue. Sometimes I can be very hard on them, but I love them. So I'm going to ask while the prayer is being offered, please pray for fathers who are not here. Amen. So who is going to pray from the prayer team, please, just to come forward and say a special prayer for the fathers. You know, sometimes it's once a year we get any form of thanks or celebration. But this evening is pre-Father's Day for next year. Amen. 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 Come, my sister, please pray for the fathers. In Jesus' name. Is the only father standing? Okay, let us pray. Oh, Lord, how God... How excellent is your name in all the world. Father, here we are again. You are our father. But in this audience, we've got some fathers too. You have came, you showed us the way. And I pray at this time, dear Lord, that as we pray your Holy Spirit upon these fathers, that there will be a change in their lives. I know that there are many good fathers, and fathers are so important in the family, because we see the men with, as men of strength, and women do depend on them. But when it comes to children sometimes, I think 
maybe sometimes the father, they haven't got that relationship that they need to have with their sons as our father above have with his son. And it should be on the same line. So today, dear Lord, I'm just praying in a special way that you will take these fathers under your wings and continue, dear Lord, to nurture them. Even though they are not children, they are mature enough, but you'll nurture them. You'll teach them your way how to teach their children. Some might be grandfathers too, but they need your wisdom. And we know once they ask, once they put themselves into that position, you are able. Because we know there's nothing that is too hard for you. We're talking about a God who when he spoke, the world came into being. We're talking about a God who could part the Red Sea. Then he, so may these fathers um, follow in your footstep, their father, and do according to your will so that they can be... Um, good relationships between them and their children. Also, dear Lord, I pray that as fathers, they have a responsibility as husbands as well. So dear Lord, you'll help them that as they work together with their wives, dear Lord, and be, show their children what a loving home should be like so that they, they, they will feel the love. And we know that love, when there's love in our lives, when there is love there, then we children will respond in a different way to the things that are happening outside. We know there are many things happening today in society and the children or the young people, they cannot help it because sometimes it's embedded in them, the things they watch, the things they see, their father and the lack of love that is being shown. So on this subject um, seems to be at a loss somehow, but all we are asking for these father to follow the footstep of Christ and continue to support their family that they, in turn, their children, in turn, will be, will, will be like them. As we heard the story this morning um, about the broken bowl, what the father and the grandfather has done to his child, so the child will do to his parents. So thank you for hearing us at this time, and thank you for blessing the men as they're standing. If there's anything special in their lives, their father, that they're seeking this time, I pray that they will know that you are able and there's a way. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you, fathers. May God bless you and strengthen you on your journey of fatherhood. Amen. I preached at the church. And after the sermon... It was a young lady who wanted to speak to me. So we sat together and she said, I've always spoken to my mom that each night when I'm in my room, lying down, something will come in the room and will stroke my hair. She said night after night she's scared. But that thing keeps coming in her room, stroking her hair. I spoke to the mom after and she said, I'll be honest with you, preacher. My daughter always said to me, but it's when you preach the sermon today, I really understood what was happening in my daughter's life. And it makes me ask myself the question, how many of us are really talking to our daughters? Here you have a daughter who keeps saying to mom, mom, at night there is something in the room. But mom never listened or understood. I was at a prayer meeting and the mother came distressed started crying her daughter left to go to school normal everything was fine but then she went to school and when she came home she started acting very strange and in a bizarre manner 
After questioning and doing investigation, she realized that the daughter went to school and somehow they were playing with the Ouija board or something like that. And then some spirit just took over the daughter. So when she came home, it was, whew. Here we have a story in the Bible. But before we go up to that story, I like to talk about a few things that happened before. Now, in Matthew chapter 15, Matthew chapter 15, that's what we're going to work on today. Matthew chapter 15, and I don't want us to stay long because I want us to do a prayer of faith before we leave. My aim is that wherever we are, I want our faith to increase. Amen? Talk to me, church. Amen? All right. Okay. I'm going to ask Elder, do me a favor, please, Elder. Give me one second. All right. So what happened now? After the Pharisees and scribes, I'm doing the build-up. Pharisees and scribes. Remember we spoke about the scribes this morning? So now we have the Pharisees and the scribes. They hate haters. Now I'm here to say to you, when people hate on you, it's not new. Jesus had haters. Oh, you're not hearing me. Jesus had haters. They were finding fault and they were imposing their traditions on Jesus. Why don't your disciples do this and disciples do that according to tradition, according to this? And I realize when you know who Jesus is, it's best you keep silent and let him teach. You have some people who are so educated, they think they can educate Jesus. I love those type of people when they confront Jesus and Jesus just shut them down cool like a cucumber. I just love it. Best teacher we will ever know is Jesus. So they ask a lot of questions about the traditions and your disciples not doing this. But every time I read and I see Pharisees, what comes to mind is traps and pretenders and jealous people, jealous of Jesus' ministry, accusers, religious fanatics, haters and critics. They are just agents and the truth be told, we do have people like that in our lives. We have some Pharisees in our lives that always seem to think they know better and always seem to be around to critique and they always as if heaven has paid them to critique Pharisees Jesus watch this now then call them a bunch of hypocrites this is the Jesus I love he called them a bunch of hypocrites now Peter being a bit concerned about the feelings of the Pharisees said to Jesus oh they are offended hear Jesus now left them alone let me give the Jamaicans one left them alone because they are blind leaders of the blind and if the blind lead the blind both shall end up in the ditch. I love Jesus. He didn't care about the feelings of the Pharisees. And I'm here to say to somebody, stop focusing on people's feelings. Truth is truth. Uh, some of you don't like that. Some of us, we give the Pharisees too much space because we are concerned about their feelings. Jesus, when Peter said to him, they are offended, he did not say, I am sorry. He said, leave them alone, for they are blind leaders of the blind. And he even put some jerk seasoning on it. If the blind lead the blind, both shall end up in the ditch. What I've learned from this, we need to be assertive. People think Christians are just walkovers. 
Somebody gave them that impression. I'm here to tell somebody, if they are blind leaders, tell them they are blind leaders of the blind. Oh, you don't want to do that because we have to be nice in the Lord. Well, it was the Lord here being the Lord. After that, he left. Here's my point, church. You have to know when to leave. Let me say that to somebody. Because you dear Lord, should I leave this job? Lord, should I? He's telling you all along, leave. You must know when your presence is no longer required. Yeah. Jesus, when you study his life, they, they, the Pharisees and the scribes, and they did what they did all the time, and they think they have a presence, and Jesus just left them. There are some people, you just have to leave. So he went now to the coast. Let's go now. Matthew chapter 15, verse 21. Can I have that on the screen, please? Matthew chapter 15, verse 21. All right. So he left. Left with the disciples. Lord, teach us when to leave. Some departments of the church. There's some people, if you ask them to leave, you better get the blood pressure machine. <laughs> let, me tell an, let me tell an individual. I don't know who I'm talking to. But you have to know when to leave. Let me say to a young girl, you have to know when to leave a relationship. You see, some of us, we really don't know when to leave a certain situation. And I'm saying to somebody tonight, this evening, in the name of Jesus Christ, whether you're online or offline, or here sitting, but you're still offline, I'm telling you today, you need to know when to leave. There are some conversations, you have to know when to leave. Watch this. Then Jesus, let's pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, lead us now and guide us to the power of your Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So he left. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. You know what I love about Jesus? In his little time here, he's always somewhere. I like that. Some of us, we sit in the same chair. I guarantee you next Sabbath I come, you in the same chair. You're not moving to Tyre and Sidon. You don't even know what this side looks like. Let me say to somebody here in the name of Jesus, your name is not on the seed. So next week, come and sit here. Look at all these chairs here. You come and you sit at the same seat. And if every other chair is empty and the one you sit in is there, somehow you have this emotional attachment to where the Pharisees sit. I'm saying to somebody this evening, move to Tyre and sit down. Move to Tyre and sit down. Amen. Move to Tyre. Come and sit at the front. You're always at the same spot since 1983. Try something new. He went to the coast of Tyre and sit down. Next verse, please. Next verse, please. We won't stay long on this one this evening. Next verse, please. Went to the coast. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord. So when you read the other Gospels, no, don't, don't go too far. The finger is hot. That's fine. When you read the other gospel, oh, it was a Syrophoenician woman. It was a Canaanite woman. And I then asked myself, why is her country of such importance? Let me help the church. There seemed to be a problem about where you come from in the house of God. And some of us have been carrying this disease for a long while. I'm here to say to you in the name of Jesus, your country will not save you. Some of us, 
have become so attached to culture and country that culture and country comes before communication with God. I'm here to help somebody today that stop promoting where you come from because where you come from, it, you, you can't say, Lord, I am Jamaican and you just open the door. Your heart. Now the Ghanaians and the Nigerians, you all can argue about jollof. Just give it to me to eat and you argue. <laughs> we have become so wrapped up in our country and our culture that it's become a part. Don't get me wrong. It has its part to play. But when it comes to God, you have to know when kingdom come before where you come from. Behold, this woman came out of the coast. Now, when you, when you read the other Gospels, Jesus went there and he didn't want no one to know. Come on, Jesus. How do you mean you're going to go to Tyre and Sidon and nobody is supposed to know? But somehow, this woman, somehow is as if she... <laughs> I want to understand, we always pray for our minds, our ears, our lips, our hands. We need to start praying that we may learn to sniff hope. We need to learn to sniff out an opportunity. We need to learn to, Jesus is here. Sometimes the way we sing and you go, Jesus is not here. The way sometimes we sing God will make a way. He's as if he's gone on holiday and will never return. Church, the way we sing, the way we pray, the way we talk, people should know. I'm talking about Mina. I, the way I move, the way I talk, the way I live should make, the way I testify, will, should make people know that God will make a way. Now this woman somehow, she sniffed out something in the atmosphere she knew that something is about to happen i'm challenging you this evening we need to start having this mindset that because of jesus something great is about to happen this woman she came out of the same coast coast means separate so she came from somewhere else and she cried unto him saying have mercy on me oh lord she found him watch this now next verse please she found him she said thou son of thou son of thou son of if i have ear in it i'll have to turn it up a little bit thou son of why are you hiding Though son of David, say for me now, my is oh father, that reading needs to be buried in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Can we have a better reading, please? My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. This morning, a father came kneeling before him crying unto Jesus for his son. Here a mother found Jesus crying to Jesus on behalf of her daughter that was vexed with a demon. Watch this. She said, have mercy upon me thou son of David my daughter this morning the father came be on behalf of the son here the mother comes on behalf of the daughter this is what I realized help the young people pray for the young people what can we do to help them go to Jesus 
Stop asking, what am I supposed to do to stop knife crime? What are we supposed to do to save our sons? What are we supposed to do to save our daughters? I'm saying to the parents now, start going to Jesus. He says, he didn't say my daughter has a demon. She said, grievously vexed with a devil. And there are many young girls who are possessed by spirits. Jesus went to Tyre and Sidon away from the Pharisees. But here this woman capitalized on the opportunity. Somehow she heard something. Balaam, she must have heard something about Jesus. Based on what she heard, she moved. Oh, let me say that again. Based on what she heard, she moved. You know why some people don't come to church? Based on what they heard, they don't move. What was the message about today? Um... Uh, what, was, what was the message again today about sister? And your young daughter and your young son in the house heard that? They don't move. There's nothing sometimes in the way we speak about Jesus that make them want to come. Let me tell you, one church I went to to do a revival. It was a few people. The night when I said, tomorrow night I'll be telling you how I found uni fee for 30000 How money came out the cash machine. How God has provided a house for me. The next night, fool. They heard something about Jesus that made them move. Some of us, when we go to hand out the, the, the tracks. Hi, I'd like to invite us to see Jesus. I, didn't know, I wasn't going to share it, but let me share it. I went to Jamaica, saw some of my friends. And church, it was a Sabbath, and I was passing them, and it was about 10 of them, all smoking weed. And let me tell you something that had a, I won't go to, into the depths, but it had a smell. It's different. So here is the church man sitting among the boys who were smoking weed. And when they begin to elder, the passion in which they, they had a little scissors as well. And the way they do it, and it's as if it's so creative, so passionate about rolling up the spliff and the way they But they just—they do everything with style, and I realize when it comes to destructive habits, they season it with style. When we are doing stuff for God, it is dry. So, I'm asking us now to start learning to promote Jesus in a way that make people move. Because if I wasn't under the influence of the Holy Spirit and they offer me a draw, brother. Because the way they offer you a draw, they don't say, hmm. They just say, brother, it, and you say you're stressed. Just take a one draw and this will relax your mind and give you a, a higher level of consciousness. <sighs> it's as if all the stress is gone. We are paying for therapy and they just... It's inviting. Why do you think the young people run to it? Because the way it's promoted. 
the way they hold it, the way they talk about it, the way they talk with it, even in the corner of the mouth, and the, and the, thing, the, the way they control it, 98% of it is out, but they still control it. I'm saying to you, the young people are being lured and enticed with flashy stuff. And that's why when they come to church now, and they said, open the Bible, we start saying, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. It's depressing. Can we start repackaging how we talk about Jesus? Let me move on. So she heard something that made her come and said, my daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. It tells me here, this woman know the issue of the daughter. Do you know how many mothers you ask? What's the daughter's problem? I don't know. We don't know. Ask the women's ministry leaders. Ask the women empowerment leaders. What is going on with the young girls? They will say everything except spiritual. Oh, they need to be empowered. Women's rights. And I'm all for your rights. I'm all for everything. But what we're not emphasizing is that the young girls of this generation, they need Jesus Christ. My daughter is grieved as they vex with the devil. And what I realized about the message this morning, the father knew exactly what the problem was and this lady knew exactly what her daughter's problem is. Demons. So she came to him and she used that messianic language. Thou son of David. I want you to understand here that she was not a Jew. She was not of the exclusive group. She was a Seraphonician woman looked down upon by the Jews. So she even making this bold step, it shows courage. Next verse, please. This is very interesting now. She went to Jesus and said, my daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. Have mercy upon me, Lord. And then it says here, but Jesus answered her, not a word. My Lord. This is unlike Jesus. Something doesn't feel right here. Because knowing Jesus, he addressed the issue and the cry of the people. But I want you to understand here, I said to you this morning, we have to learn to study everything that Jesus does. We have to know who he is because if I go to Jesus and say, Lord, I'm desperate for something. I am hungry. I am thirsty. I need a solution to my problem. And he answered me not a word. It simply means that it's best I just leave. He answered her, not a word. Watch this now. You remember this morning when he asked the scribes, why are you questioning the disciples? Did the scribes respond? No. I realize here that when he answered her, not a word, the next line says, and his disciples. You ready for this? And his disciples came. And beg him, saying, send her away. Oh my God. Church, what is happening here? The woman came asking for help. Jesus answered the woman, not a word. Then the disciples said, get this woman out of here. Someone is forgetting the prayer request. And I realize right here that Jesus was intentional in not answering the woman. Now the thing is this, if you never know who he is, you start to have a different perspective. But when you know that Jesus is kind, he's loving, he's considerate, he cares, and then he doesn't answer, you then have to ask yourself, what's going on? So I'm saying, we got to know that we know that we know him. That even when he doesn't answer our prayers, he's still a loving Jesus. 
Because I do struggle with that sometimes. When he doesn't answer, I then start to think about his character. But he's still the same. Remember, this woman and her people are being looked down upon and are not worthy, in quote, of the blessings and the, of, of the privileges of the Jews. When Jesus didn't answer the woman, the disciples took the opportunity to say, she's coming so desperately, asking for her daughter, get her out of here. Now, why you don't do it yourself? Why are you asking Jesus to send her away? You do it yourself. And this is exactly the catch. They have not yet learned that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life some of us behave like the gospel is black it's for white people as well it's for Asians as well you got to understand some of us are approaching Christianity through culture instead of approaching culture through Christianity. Send her away for she cried after us. Now, if he sends her away, the girl is still possessed. This is what happens sometimes in our meetings. We are not addressing the real problems. When we meet as men to mentor young men, we are not addressing the problems. When you meet as women to address the young girls, we are not addressing the problem. I want us to come to the realization that between the two stories, we tend to focus on issues that are not the real issues so send her away they fell in the trap Jesus paused because he wanted to expose the heart of the disciples They were not ready to take on the world with the message. They still have that exclusive exclusivity in their mindset. So Jesus paused so he could dig a ditch for them to learn. I noticed when we were called to go out. Some of us will never go out until the roof is falling apart. Oh, it's the last days and people are crying out. Then go. I heard someone say, someone, some of us have so much excuses. We become excusiologists. Church, if we really love the people out there and know that some of them, even though they dress nice, look nice, talk nice, and walk nice, they are crying out for help, we will go. But you know what? We have become so exclusive. Send her away. But Jesus paused to expose their hearts. I wonder what will happen tonight if our hearts are exposed. I wonder why so many young people who come in are leaving and then we say lord please help the young people demons are enticing them lord they don't have a passion for you i wonder if when he pauses to expose us that deep down inside church we don't love them enough
tell me we love those young people and you will see them here tell me we love them and we don't call them tell me we love them and we don't even know their birthdays tell me we love them and we have never called them to ask them how is university tell me we love them and we have never hugged them before tell me we love them and we have never held their hands and prayed with them for them and on them tell me we love them tell me we love them and we have never ever give them a book to read tell me we love them and never ask them how are you and wait for the response tell me we love them Balaam. tell me we love them and then when they get pregnant send them away i'm here to tell somebody today sometime when we send them away the boyfriend also does the same Remember they have hospital appointments. Remember sometimes they can't sleep at night. Remember they need nappies. Remember they need a safe home. Tell me you love them. Because some of us, we cater more for the disfellowship than to the than togethership. Tell me we love them tonight. Next verse, please. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now let me ask you something to think about. Who was he talking to? Some of you will say the woman. Some of them, some of us will say the disciples. But let me tell you, the disciples said, send her away. His response was, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Something is going on here between Jesus and the disciples. I wonder, remember I told you this morning, the, the boy was still possessed and Jesus dealing with the father. Here, the girl is possessed at home. The mom is here. But Jesus is dealing with the disciples. I wonder if many of us are crying, Lord, save them. Lord, save them. Lord, save them. But he has to first save us. I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Still exclusive. Because he was testing them and challenging their love and their thinking. What was the problem, church? The demon possessed girl. That's the problem. But there's a bigger problem your mindset, your attitude, your so called love for people. And that's why I said, church, bear in mind, sometimes we think we are working on the problem, but that's not the problem. Next verse, please. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. The father this morning said, Lord, help us. The mother is now saying, Lord, help me. Because if you help my daughter, you are helping me. Wow. 
I wonder how many mothers have left their children to somebody else to address their problem. This mother came specifically to Jesus even though she was of another country and looked down upon. So already her faith has broken a barrier. Hear me this evening, church. Use your faith to break barriers. You may be an African and the Jamaican have the answer. Stop comparing each other and stop doing this. But you know what? Go break barriers. The message of God is not exclusive. It is inclusive for everybody. There's something for everybody. After he's talking to the disciples to get their mind, she kept her eyes on her needs from Jesus. And I'm saying to anybody, stop focusing on people who are close to him and start focus on him. Because some of us, oh, the pastor this, the elders this, the church people this. Stop focusing on those who are around him and start focusing on him. Because you know what? He will use you to help those who are around him. She came and worshipped him saying, Lord, help me. Next verse, please. Next verse. What does the next verse say? But he answered and said, it is not meat. To take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. Oh, Father, what in Zion? Jesus, what's going on? This time he's speaking to her. Remember, Jesus always have a motive for doing what he does. It is not proper for me to take the children's bread. Meaning that what is exclusively for the Jews. And cast it to the dogs. Because the Jews look down on these people as dogs. I want you to understand here. Jesus is somehow testing the woman's faith. But also challenging the mindset of the disciples. Watch the woman now. You ready for this? Because when you have a need, you learn to overcome barriers. That woman knows that Jesus is the only hope she has. Only hope. For many of us, church, this situation here, we would have packed up and gone a long time. And I'm saying to somebody here, just like how the father was determined, the mothers also have to be determined. This already should have shaken her faith. But it didn't. But it didn't. Some of us have been here for years. And your faith is shaken when somebody sits in your seat. Some of us have been through storms and it's a teardrop that caused you to leave church. Watch the lady now. Watch the woman. Next verse. Next verse. And she said, truth, Lord. I agree with you. Yet the dogs. Oh my God. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. They can call me dog. But I know that also the dog benefits from the master's table. So even if I'm a dog, give me a dog's blessing. That means I ain't leaving here without being fed. Oh, Balaam, you're not getting this. Even if I am a dog, I am leaving here with a dog's blessing. 
I love her faith. She is even happy with the crumbs because the crumbs belongs to the dogs. So therefore now, Jesus, you know what? Yes, the bread may be for the Jews, but you know what? The crumbs is ex for, the crumbs is for the dogs. So give me what belongs to me because faith in you will bring something to me. Whoa! I wonder if our language impressed Jesus. Next verse, please. Next verse. Next verse. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, Woman. Jeez. Woman. Listen to me. Great. Say it for me, church. Great. I see somebody sleeping beside you. When they hear great, they raise their head. Great. Great is your faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. Let me ask you something, Balaam. Did Jesus raise his hand and say, Father, we cast out this demon, let the demon go loose? No. The woman's faith in Jesus released her daughter from demonic influence. Let me say it again. The woman's faith in Jesus. The daughter was not in the presence of Jesus, but the mother was. Jesus. It was her faith in Jesus healed a daughter that was far away. wonder if somebody here been praying for a daughter or your child for years telling Jesus to come to the house Jesus please do this I wonder if your faith this evening in Jesus Christ can release the demonic strongholds on your children next verse next verse please and her daughter and her daughter was delivered from that grievous spirit the same hour woman great is your faith to the father if you can believe all things are possible what i'm learning now demons have no power over our faith this is what i've learned i wonder if our children are still trapped because of our faith I wonder if there's a mother who get caught up in what the church is not doing, what the disciples should be doing, so much so that it's affecting her faith. So here's what I do before I close. Elder, let me have that water. I want to do something and then I leave. Watch this church. I thought about this when I was in the vestry. Come and, come and hold this on me, please, Elder. This is what I want us to leave with. Hold the mic for me, please. Thank you. Now, some of us here in this church. We have a lot of problems. We have a lot. This is your spiritual life this evening. 
and you came in with a little faith today. I'm asking every single one of us in the name of Jesus. Put a little more faith in Jesus. As a matter of fact, put some more. Can you imagine what will happen in our life and our situation if we learn to put so much more faith in Jesus? Imagine what would happen this evening, this night, if we walk out of Balaam full of faith. Walk out of here. And even if there's just a little bit more faith. There's no more room. I'm sure this is a cup that Jesus wouldn't mind drinking out of. Leave here with so much more faith than you're walking with this morning. And give God a nice taste of something great to come. This tastes really good. Let me give Jesus some more. For some of us, the way we talk, thank you, Allah. The way we talk, Jesus, our belief, when Jesus tastes, it's not good. Full of doubt, full of fear. This is not good. So I'm going to ask, is there somebody in this room you have heard messages upon messages we have good sabbath but today you want to make a declaration father increase my faith on a scale of one to a hundred it might be 70 lord but father tonight i'm gonna try to make it 75 or 80 just just increase my faith if that's you i'm asking please to stand just imagine what your life would be like if you just had a little more faith. The Father, by his faith in Jesus, his boy was healed. The mother, by her faith, the daughter was healed. For some of us, it's not a matter of healing. It could be something that you desperately need because I'm standing here and I need some stuff. I'm praying for some stuff and I'm just imagining what it would be like if I just have a little more faith. Please, between now and tomorrow, pray and ask God to challenge your faith. I'm going to ask a member from the prayer team to just come and pray that we will walk out of here this evening with space for greater faith. And church, don't just stand because you want to stand. I want to see us start growing from now. Is there a member from the prayer team who will come and pray for faith? I don't want us to press the Sister Joyce thing because she prayed this morning. Sister Davis, I'm going to ask Sister Davis to come. Is it, what, is, what's your name, my sister? Sister Linda, you come. Sister Linda, you come. Listen to me. If your faith is only 70%, at least 75. Take it to 100. Take it to a place where God is pleased with our faith so we'll have two short prayers while the prayers are being offered ask God help me with my faith so we have two short prayers oh my 
most kind, loving and compassionate God. Again, we humble bow before thee. Lord, nothing in our hands we bring, but simple to your cross we'll cling, hoping one day to exchange it for a crown. As we come this evening, dear God, we realize how much we have been locked of faith, and we ask, dear God, that you will increase our faith and that we will have more, more trust in you and we will humble ourselves as we are to. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We adore you and we magnify you. We lift up your holy name tonight because you are worthy to be praised. In your hand, dear God, we commit every head that bow here tonight. And help us, dear God, as we listen to your word, that our lives will be transformed and we will be what you want us to be through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. While I'm praying, please just lift up your hearts to God and ask him to fill you with faith that will move mountains. Loving Father, faithful God, really this evening our hearts are really have really been stirred with a word straight from your throne. We have recognized that we have failed you so many times. Our hearts have been full of doubt. We have allowed the enemy to creep in and overwhelm us with problems upon problems. So often times our focus was on our problems as opposed to beyond the God of whom our problems is not an issue. This evening, this evening, I pray in the name of Jesus, I pray in the power of your might that you will open up our eyes to see and to understand. We serve an almighty God, a God for whom um, this earth belongs to him. In fact, the whole universe belongs to you. You have said in your word, the cattle upon a thousand hills is yours. If you were hungry, you would not tell us everything belongs to you. And Father, this evening we have recognized yet again that we are your children, bought with the blood of Jesus. Help us to recognize the price you have paid for our salvation and your aim and your hope is that every single one of us will be saved. We will be saved if we reach out to you and say, I doubt, I don't understand, I cannot help myself, help me. This evening if we call upon you and say, my faith is so small. But I want to trust you. I pray in the name of Jesus as your son has demonstrated that you are here ready to fill our cups up to overflowing with your hallowed presence, with faith that will move mountains. I pray in the name of Jesus, you will, whatever the enemy is using to shackle us, I pray you will release us from it this evening. And I pray as we lift up our hearts to you and call upon your name. You have told us in your words, if we seek you with all our hearts, we will find you. So, Father, in your mercy this even open up our hearts and our minds to recognize that when we call, you hear. We are calling this night. Give us a faith, God, that will not shrink. A faith that will be so bold and when the enemy comes in and wants to topple us off, or we will be saying to him, my God is able. And when we come in the name of Jesus and in the power of your might, 
I pray that you will let us understand that there is nothing you won't do to save your children. Let us understand that the en our enemy, Satan, has already been defeated by you. And so God, in the name of Jesus this evening, help us. Where our faith is weak, make it strong in you. Because we are not depending upon ourselves. We are depending upon the God who is the God of all gods, the Lord of all lords, who is my God and our God. And so in this evening, do not allow any one of us to leave this, your presence without knowing we have a God who will stand for us even though the heavens fall. Give us strength to trust you. Give us a boldness to know that with you, even with one of us and you on our side, we are a majority. We want to say thank you for the word you have sent us. May we go forth this night conquering on to conquer as we walk with you. And as we allow you to walk with us and to fill up our hearts with to overflowing with your hallowed presence. Thank you for loving us the way you do. Thank you for the faith you have given us. We accept it. And we thank you that through Jesus, we will overcome whatever the enemy is doing. For with you, victory has been assured. Bless the presenter the, or, or speaker this evening. May you continue to fill him to overflowing with your hallowed present. And as he come and share your word each evening, may many souls come to know you and be saved. For we pray this in the name of Jesus with thanksgiving. Amen. As you go, if you can believe, all things are possible. Woman, man, great is your faith. God bless you. Good night. I want to set you one challenge. Think of two people, one member and one non-member who needs to be here tomorrow and give them a call. That's the challenge. And you to be here tomorrow. But think of one member, one non-member who needs to be here tomorrow and give them a call. That's your challenge for this evening. Good night. Thank you for coming. And by God's bless, we will hopefully we'll see you tomorrow evening. Thank you and good night.